Joining us now, Zach Guzman with Eva Chen from Instagram and Mark Darcy from Facebook. All right, everybody. Uh, we are going to keep the AMS train rolling with the panel that I think a lot of the uh, influencers in the crowd and the marketers have been waiting for all day. Today we have Mark Darcy, uh, Facebook's chief creative officer, as well as Eva Chen. Uh, as she's been introduced, I don't need to introduce her, but I'm going to do it anyways, uh, Instagram's director of fashion partnerships. Guys, thank you so much for being here. Um, I think that this panel is going to be interesting because, Mark, you've been with the company twice as long as Eva has, so we're going to have some differing uh, viewpoints here today. But I wanted to start with an interesting <laughs> question, uh, perhaps a simple one. Yes. Maybe it's more simple to ask than it is to answer. But since things have changed so much at Facebook over the years since Mark Zuckerberg built it 15 years ago, the question I wanted to start with is uh, how you guys answer the question, what is Facebook? Can we do go? Yeah, you go first. Sure. Well, I, I think it's interesting you mentioned Mark. I think right from the end, you know, the outset of the story of Facebook is about giving people the power to build connection. And I think increasingly that connection has evolved into different forms. Instagram is a great example of this around expression. But really giving the world this power of voice, of connection, and building community right from the outset to now has stayed very true. Mm -hmm. Would you you'd echo that? I'd echo that. I mean, for me, and I can speak to Instagram, is really about bringing you closer to whether it's the interests that you love. Like for me, I'm trying to live a more sustainable life. So I follow the hashtag zero waste. Or to the people uh, that you like love or you admire. I know that KJ Miller from the brand Mented is speaking later today, mm -hmm. and she's someone I met over Instagram, and then once we met in person, we forged this friendship, um, and we keep up with each other and DM and we talk to each other, so it's all about the real life connections. I guess that has been the common theme. It, uh, we'll stick with that connection. Uh, Mark, over the years, I guess the, the constant focus within the company may have shifted over the years, right? You're talking about starting with just newsfeed tweaks to marketplace. Now we're talking about shop, all of these different features that have been built. But connection being the constant theme there, has that been the driving force from the beginning? Yeah, I think it has been. But I think in some of the other things you're talking about, you know, particularly some of the commercial aspects of, of, of how businesses build on the platform, we've always had a very simple focus on putting people first and saying, if we're going to you know, have these experiences, what, what can businesses create? What, what do we provide businesses the opportunity to create that's going to have value for people? And every single thing you see that we do, if you follow that principle, that connection turns into value, but it's value for people and it's value for businesses, whether they're small businesses or big ones. And even when we talk about influencers, though, mm -hmm. on Instagram, right? Because you kind of came from the fashion background. Yep. You were editor-in-chief, hand-tapped uh, by Anna Winter to do uh, Lucky. Um, when you shifted over from the fashion space to the tech space, though, and you were building out Instagram, what, what do you think you noticed most from being on the fashion side and the switching in-house with Instagram in terms of that connection piece? Well, for me, when, even when I was a magazine editor, I became known as the magazine editor that loved Instagram. And so I would be backstage at a show, and a makeup artist like Pat McGrath would stop me and be like, is this, is this a good post? Should I post this? Um, and so it was a really natural transition for me personally. I think that what we're seeing in the fashion space is the democratization of fashion, mm -hmm. and that fourth wall is coming down, right? Um, everyone feels like they have a stake in something. Everyone wants to feel like they're closer to the brands that they love. And they're also finding influence from um, all around now. Like, I see this amazing printed shirt kind of situation that you're wearing. I am, like, influenced by you. I'm into that shirt. Um, and what people want is to be able to use Instagram as a way to get closer, yep. whether it's to customers or just fans or just like fashion enthusiasts. And I really think Instagram has allowed the fashion world to kind of relax a little. Yeah. I want to get into that uh, kind of breaking the fourth wall because we were just trying to promote this on Instagram before this. Okay. And you gave me some key insights here. Yes. So I want to ask you guys both about what brands, uh, what mistakes they might make when they're trying to use Facebook and Instagram to drive <laughs> that message. Um, what do you think is kind of the keys to success mm -hmm. in working that? You say breaking the fourth wall. Is it all about being organic, authentic? What's, what are the keys for both businesses and people using the platform? I mean, I think you touched on one of the kind of points I often make is that you have to remember that as a brand, your content is next to people as well. You're next to someone's sister who just had a baby, your college roommate who's on vacation in Mexico City. Like, 
your content as a brand is surrounded by a lot of other um, people. And so creating content as a brand that feels personal, I think is very important. On the, in the fashion side, I always tell brands, don't just post your lookbook image, please. Like that's like, it's boring. Show the behind the scenes, show like the hairstylist kind of like, you know, blowing with a, like a fan, like trying to get the hair perfect. Um, that's just so much more compelling. Like when we were backstage taking an image earlier, Zach was like, okay, let's take a picture. And I was like, okay, let's get some props. I've never let's, seen let's, anyone let's move. Let's find so our quickly. light. Let's and change then, the suit. Let's, Everything well, was no, I mean, I was wearing no, the color. It's awful. No, you it's made me wear the piece of blue. Um, uh, but basically it's like, you know, bringing that personal touch and video is so important as well, especially in the fashion space. Nothing tells a story more. Like you can see a skirt hanging on a, on a, on a rack or just on a model, but when you see it moving and you see the pleats moving and the colors swirling and you hear the music, it just really brings it to life. Mark, how much of that is actually uh, platform specific? Because we're talking about Instagram yeah. being next to people, but how much of it is kind of the theme of what we're talking about today in terms of generations and what maybe millennials, younger people care about? Yeah, well, I think you, if you look at Facebook, you look at Instagram, there's nuances to how businesses show up and create, but the consistency, as Eva's saying, is that authenticity, that you don't want to have an artifice of how you're showing up. It's got to come from a story you want to tell, how you want to express yourself. And I think that's true across the board. It's particularly true with generally younger consumers who are looking for purpose in the brands they connect with, that they invest in, they want to know the story, they want to increasingly, as Eva said, in sustainability and environmentalism. These are not um, trends, these are core principles of branding and the, and the brands that are, are really connecting. And that story behind the brand is an integral part of that. So your ability, our ability as brand marketers, whether we're starting out a small business, or we're running the biggest business in the world, is our ability to do that and to do it fluidly across all the platforms. And just looking out at some of the faces here today, I don't know if I don't know what percentage people actually are, are building brands themselves. But uh, your, yourself, your own Instagram presence itself can be a brand mm -hmm. as well. Eva, you've built up a following of more than a million followers, and that's not just inside cooking. That trend was there before you were even at yeah. Instagram. Mm -hmm. So I mean, what are I guess people like talking about mistakes? What are some of the mistakes that you made along the way? Perhaps not good posts. Oh well, <laughs> they're all great. No, <laughs> um, I don't know. I. I think the main thing is like, I just tend not to overthink when I'm posting. I think a lot of people, um, I have a friend who literally will take 20 minutes to post one Instagram story. Um, like stories go away in 24 hours and you have to remember that each of you here, you're in this room, you come from like a unique perspective. You, you Maybe you flew to get here, maybe you're here like representing a brand, but most of your audience won't be in a room like this. And so I think a lot of that storytelling and sharing the behind the scenes um, is important. Um, you know, I was in Mexico City yesterday, I'm here today, like, I showed the tacos I ate. I showed the people I was hanging out with. I reposted stories that other people posted about me. I just tend not to overthink it. But when I, from the brand perspective and even from the personal perspective, I think overthinking is like the death yeah. of Instagram. And I think that's probably when you look at, if there's, there's a lot of growth in a lot of different places, but stories as a form is, is because of that, is because of the freshness of it, the ephemeral nature of it, the ease of it is giving people more places they can express in a different, less structured way. You know, and, and it's, it's really critical. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're talking about stories, but it's not just stories anymore. You guys just launched AR ads as well, so we'll shift to kind of the business focus there. Um, when we talk about AR ads, obviously marketers will talk uh, about the way that an impression is not created equal across yeah. the board, right? So what about these innovations at Instagram or at Facebook in the way that businesses communicate to the users on the platform is kind of at the heart of the connection as well? Yeah, well, I've, over the years, if you watch the trends that happen, they're always led by people. Mm -hmm. So people move, people move first, businesses move behind them, and generally small businesses move more quickly than big businesses. And that's true if you see the adoption of these forms. And if you look at uh, Facebook, from being little ads on the side of a website, to mobile, to Instagram, the constant is developing more paint and canvas for creatives, for businesses large and small to build, more interesting experiences. And as Eva was saying, with like the context of this marketing and this advertising, you, you know, we don't have the right to show up in these spaces. These are spaces that are built in a certain way. And as marketers, as creators, we need to, you know, create things that feel contextually right and rewarding. The thing with AR or polling or these different things is they create a dialogue, they create an interaction, they create delight or utility that people are looking for in their advertising. You know, advertising's transformation is the burden of expectation. It needs to be relevant, it needs to be useful. It can't just show up and hope that it works, right? Mm -hmm. So the more we can design things that have value for people first, as I was saying, the more it's going to drive value for business. Mm -hmm. 
And I mean, uh, when we talk about Instagram specifically, now you guys have Shop as well. So I, I don't know how many people have actually interacted with the uh, AR uh, lenses there, but it's uh, an example would be trying on a Ray-Ban yeah. pair of glasses to see yeah. how they look on your face. We just launched that. Yeah, or perhaps lipstick colors, if yeah. you know that sort of thing. Um, Kylie, you too can have lips like Kylie Jenner. <laughs> I'm talking to you in the suit over there. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, sure. Uh, <laughs> when we talk about that, though, and the push for Shop, um, what, what are you trying to get out of that piece? I know obviously it, it's exciting to be able to have people check out through the platform, not mm -hmm. have to leave, but what have you been seeing in, in launching that? So we launched Instagram Checkout about six months ago in March. Um, and when we launched it, we launched it with a pretty small group of businesses that really hit a lot of different um, types of businesses. We had digital disruptors like Warby Parker or um, The Way, which is run by Jen Atkin, who is a celebrity hairstylist to the Kardashians. We have brands like Nike, Adidas, H&M, Net-A-Porter, Burberry, Uniqlo, um, and the goal really is that we know that people are inspired on Instagram. I've only worked at Instagram for four years, so half the amount of time as you, but like, even before I worked at Instagram, you could see people saying like, I want to shop everything like this influencer is wearing, but I can't, like I have to screen grab it, it's then saved, then I have to go back and find it, then I have to like look it up online, like red and black check jacket. We wanted to close the loop and just yeah. make it so much easier. Mm -hmm. um, and so now if you're shopping in any of these brands, if you're in the US, you enter your credit card information securely once, you enter your address once, and then at any of these brands you tap, add to bag, Check out, done, two steps. And so words that people have used to describe it is like, oh my gosh, addictive, dangerous, <laughs> RIP wallet, goodbye money. Uh, but we really want it to be like a fun way to consume fashion and get closer to the brands you love. Yeah, and I think that's across all of business. One, you know, all of us are living in this world of just looking at things and wanting what we call reducing the friction, zero friction. So every step, every piece of design, everything we can do to make things easier that's transformationally impactful to both the business growth and also the economic growth. So the more, more we can put into that design element so it's easy, the, the better that we think the experience for people is gonna be, it's gonna be better for business as well. And I guess the question would be if it's better for influencers as well. And right now, Eva, just real quick, influencers aren't getting paid through that if they're promoting uh, specific items themselves, right? Well, some brands and influencers, for instance, let's use Michael Kors as an example, they have a pre-existing relationship with someone like a Bella Hadid who's, or a Gigi Hadid who's like in their campaign, but we are not a part of that, no. Got it, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, you see the shirt, you like the shirt. If you I like, like that shirt. one, we'll go ahead and figure out yeah, where it would let's be. Do it. That's yeah. the way that it would work. Um, yeah. So that was a very interesting move to kind of launch shop. Another interesting move, though, when we're talking about influencers was the idea that caused mass panic across the influencer world mm -hmm. uh, when it was announced, which was the idea of potentially hiding likes. And I think a lot of people panicked because they're like, well, I don't want like likes to go away. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not exactly what happened. Uh, yeah, so, what was the thinking behind kind of the change? So we've guys? been testing um, in certain markets hiding likes. Um, for those of you guys who are on Instagram, which hopefully you all are, when you open Instagram, the first thing you often see is someone's photo and the number of likes uh, right beneath it. And the thinking behind hiding it or making it not the first thing we see is really just to free up expression mm -hmm. and creativity. Um, it might not be as relevant for those of you guys in the room who are working at large brands that get tens of thousands of likes, but put yourself in the shoes of a 15 year old who spent like mm -hmm. an hour you know, thinking about what she wanted to post and then when she doesn't get the number of likes she might take it down or feel self-conscious. So Instagram really wants to be the safest platform and friendliest platform and kindest platform out there. And this is just one step that we're testing to see um, you know, whether, what the response is. And so far it's been very positive, I have to say. And I, Wait, I, what have you seen? Well, I personally have had this experience for a few months now and I definitely feel like I don't really check the number of likes an image gets anymore because it's actually two steps to find the number of likes. And I just kind of feel like it's closer to stories where you kind of post and you're like, whatever, it's out there in the ether. And I definitely feel more liberated to post. Is it the same learning on the Facebook side? I was about to say, with someone with a thousand, one thousandth of followers of Eva, I feel the same way. <laughs> yeah, we both I have don't the feel, same. My social anxiety is also reduced. Yeah, yeah. we have pretty much the same amount yeah, yeah, you and I. We have a little bit of catching up yeah. to do. Um, but what's interesting is, is that kind of concept is, is across both the Facebook arm and the Instagram arm as well. For people who are on the outside looking into the company itself, I think that's a question of how separate these entities are when you guys are working on things like that. Are, are you guys pretty siloed? Is it the Instagram world, the WhatsApp world, or, or is it all of these worlds working together? Well, I think we're very much one company in, in, in many senses, and from a business standpoint, which is where I spend my time, 
um, you know, what marketers, what all businesses want is they want the, the, the ease of being able to access the potential of all these platforms to reach people where they are. Mm -hmm. And so we work very hard to make that simple, whether it's from an ad, creating an ad in one platform and being able to distribute it everywhere, to making sure the learnings um, you know, are shared so that the design principles are shared across all the platforms. It's just easier. And so we're very much focused on that. And if you talk to um, the Instagram team, um, they will talk about you know, the, the um, knowledge that we have from the work on Facebook with identifying hateful content or, mm -hmm. or speech and, and being able to scale those across the platform. Mm -hmm. So I think you know, from an infrastructure standpoint, from a whole bunch of different areas, the value of the company is, is every day proven out with how we structure it. That said, and even can talk to this, there are deep, great cultures mm -hmm. of um, unique points of view of how these different applications serve our communities around the world in different ways and pursue different ways of bringing that to life. Yeah, we do have separate product teams yeah. for a lot of the features. Um, and so a lot of the work is do being done separately, but it is one family. Um, and a lot of the learnings are shared, which is yeah. like critical. Mark, I mean, when we talk about it, a, a lot of people outside the Facebook world, uh, Elizabeth Warren being one of them, this is something that was, yeah. was supposed to be talked about in, in private at the company. Yeah. Um, the audio that Mark Zuckerberg had when he was talking about this with the company leaked. Uh, you know, and if you're talking about each of these learnings being shared across the company, one of the questions that a lot of people have would be, what would happen if these entities were broken up? And I think that that's one that people are confused about. What do you think the impact would be if she was successful in something like that to break an Instagram away from a Facebook? Yeah, I can't speculate on that specifically, but what I can say is, as I said, the, if you've been in the company, been in the company about eight years, the way in which these platforms are focused on a singular mission mm -hmm. around connecting the world, giving people the power to build community, express themselves, it's a common sort of focus. And the way the company is structured to support that across the applications is something you see the benefit of every single day. Yeah. Okay. And I, I, businesses see it as well. We just announced today 140 million businesses are using each of the applications and, and the vast majority of them use all of them in a, in a different way to connect and grow the businesses. So that's the connection I spend most of my time with and you see the benefits of it. I would say from a safety and well-being standpoint, yeah. the, the, the work that the Facebook team is doing for like bullying, for instance, and other safety features, like Instagram really benefits from that. Um, our team is much smaller. Like the Instagram team is pretty small. Mm -hmm. um, using partnerships as an example, it's like a few dozen people around the world, whereas Facebook, it's a, to be able to tap into people in certain markets as well is an enormous benefit. Yeah. I mean, things have changed pretty quickly too, though, just since you've come over to Instagram, right? Mm -hmm. uh, four years ago. Mm -hmm. When you're thinking about this and looking at the way that there are other competitors out there as well, kind of trying to do the same thing that Facebook and Instagram are doing, as yeah. well, TikTok, Snap. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you guys think about when you think about threats to what you're trying to build? Is, is that a piece of this as well that someone else might be able to come along, especially as we're talking about generational opportunities here, and capture a younger audience? I don't know. I remember the day we launched Instagram Stories, um, and a designer friend of mine literally called me and was like, why are you giving me more work to do? <laughs> um, and now half a billion people use stories every day. Um, it's hard to imagine a world without stories. Uh, I don't know, I think that there's plenty of room at the table for everyone. It's really important um, from the brand side that people keep innovating. Yeah. I sometimes will be speaking to a fashion brand um, or a model and she'll be like, oh, like, I don't know, what should I be doing on IGTV? Like, should I do it? Um, you have to try and experiment and remember that social media and just media in general was sitting here, you know, at a Yahoo Finance Summit, that's media. Like, experimentation is critical. Mm -hmm. It's really important and we feel that way yeah. at the company. Yeah, and I think, look, th th there's new players all the time that are really interesting in how they build and the different ways each of us are gonna choose to, to both create and consume content that we're making. But the big macro shift, and I think this is probably the, the biggest thing if you look over the last five, 10 years and going forward, is we're the start of this massive shift in empowerment, where for most of the time, and I look at Yahoo, most of the time through the internet, there was a few people, and before with the internet, a few people who had all the power to create what we saw. There is a fundamental shift that our audience, whether they're our customers of our businesses or our consumers of content, they're making more content than we are they have the same tools. They have the AR tools, they have the story. They're creators. So your audience has not only the ability to listen, mm -hmm. but to create, to co-create, to comment. And that dynamic is a fundamental shift. So they will constantly be evolution in the tools and the different applications and platforms that compete to be the best one for different jobs they want to do. And that's a good thing. 
Sure, I, I think that is a good thing. Uh, just to wrap, I know you guys, uh, Eva especially, you just got back from Mexico City. You're, you're running on red-eye energy right now, so I appreciate you giving us that much time and sticking through all of this, but appreciate it. Mark Darcy, Facebook's Chief uh, Creative Officer, and Eva Chen as well, Director of Instagram's uh, Fashion Partnerships. Guys, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you.